He's got the insta-kill button, so you absolutely can't have him, like, you know, play basketball, anything, any head-hits-the-ground type activity you're going to want to avoid. Yeah, he's like, one blow to the head could kill him. Yeah. Right. And I wrote in my notes at this point, honestly, if the rest of this movie is just about who be doing all the things that aren't basketball, I am in. Right. Just yes. like, at a fair, having a caramel apple. Yeah, there's so much stuff you can do that's not basketball. <laughs> Literally all but one thing. It's fucking great. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because all the other stuff I wanted to do had math in it. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Do Christian people know that there are activities that aren't sports? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> they know about breakfast. I know that. Uh, <laughs> right, and sitting 2,400 miles to my west is returning guest masochist and host of Talk Nerdy, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. <sighs> yeah. That's all yeah. the enthusiasm we can really yeah. hope to muster out of you at this point. Sure. But before we get to the movie tonight, I want to remind you that we're right in the middle of our annual fundraiser, Vulgarity for Charity. Once again, we're raising money for Modest Needs, a charity that helps folks who aren't eligible for other kinds of help get back on their feet and avoid poverty. They're a 501c3 charity, so your donation is tax deductible, but you're not just doing a good deed. You're also getting a chance for some sweet, sweet revenge. If you donate $50 or more and then send us proof to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com, you could hear the victim of your choice get the roasting they deserve on air over on Scathing Atheist or cognitive dissonance. We're going to be doing 200 roasts this year, our top 100 donors and 100 folks that we randomly choose. That's right. And since we're doing the random ones first, the sooner you donate, the better chance you have for hearing your roast on air. And I feel like we need to clarify this. It's a pretty good chance yes. that you should super <laughs> donate, even if you've only got 50 bucks to spend. You're, this is not some national lottery. No, people. right. Exactly. Exactly. But most of the donors are probably going to get their roasts right on air. Now, we're recording this on Friday. We've already raised over $50,000, which with our anonymous donors match of the first hundred grand means that we're already more than $100,000 into this thing. But there's still so much more and so many more people that need your help. So head over to modestneeds.org or check Check the show notes for more information. Vulgarity for charity. Don't tell your ex to go fuck themselves. Leave it to the pros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with that out of the way, tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? Oh, yeah. This movie is called Hoovie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fun to say. Hoovie. Yeah, every time I put it in, so I have an Apple TV. So when I put it in the search, you can just say your search on Apple TV. Could not understand what I was saying. No. <laughs> not at all. It's like a Scottish person calling 911. They were just like, we can't help you. I'm no. so sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. This is real bad. That's pretty much the most important thing I have to say about this film. All right. Um, I guess we'll, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So, and Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you love listening to Aaron Rodgers explain why he won't get vaccinated, but you wish the free market solution was the absolute poverty of more movie characters, <laughs> you will love this movie. Oh, that's the darkest. There's so many darkest parts of this. But yeah, I think that one is the darkest. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I mean, I think so far. And how many of these have I done with you guys? Too many. I don't count. Oh, it's so too many. depressing. I think this might have been the best worst acting. Ooh. Really? I don't know. I mean, I've done a lot of these and none of them are good. But wow, was the acting in this movie bad. The main character and the actress that played his sister were so spectacularly bad <laughs> that like they <laughs> they brought everyone else down to their level somehow. Yep. Yeah. It was uh, it was and I was just bored. You know like there's the bad, there's the movies that are so bad they're funny. There's the movies that are so bad they're cringy. This one I was just like, wait, what? You've lost me. <laughs> like I just kept wandering. I literally just kept wandering away from the TV and then I was like, no, I'm at work right now. Yeah. I have to yeah. keep doing this. This is the movie version of filling your mouth with white bread and just being like, <laughs> yes. well, yes. I don't know how to extricate this from my body. <laughs> All right, so I, I took the easy one, and apologies for that. I went with best worst breakfast club clothes. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. we're going to get there. I'm not going to spoil it now. But if at any point during this review, because this is a review about a kid who gets a brain tumor and then overcomes all the odds to live his dream and play college basketball. But oh, that's it. Right. Are we done? You just. Yeah, right. No, 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 that's the whole fucking movie. Nothing else. So but there will be points where you're going to think to yourself, oh, come on, guys, go easy on this poor brain tumor family. Just wait for this movie's <laughs> breakfast club close. You will no longer have sympathy. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. We promise everyone deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I'm going to go with best worst stakes because as Noah mentioned, the circumstances of this movie are a kid gets brain tumor. But the stakes are if your kid plays basketball, he might die. Should he play basketball or do literally any other yeah. human activity <laughs> and not die? And the movie's like... Mm, tricky. Right. Tri yes. tri tricky. And ultimately gets it wrong. Yep. And can we be, just be clear about this? And I know we'll get there, but this is not like a kid who was born to play basketball. This is like a five foot nine. He doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't Th end up an NFL. Yeah, he's not. It's, he's not a basketball. But like, why? He is not why? a basketball player no. right now. <laughs> this is based on a true story. He is not. A, this is a movie about a person who eventually went. Eh, I don't know if I care that much about basketball. <laughs> He played for like Carl Sandburg Universe. Who knew that was a thing? Yeah, I like Carl Sandburg. But anyway, and 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 and, and look. I know we make this look easy, but tearing into feel good stories about children with brain tumors is actually tricky. So we're going to need a pause to warm up, but we'll be back in a minute with all the clunky dialogue and zero dimensional characters that are Hoovy. OMG, Kara, you look amazing, girl. Thank you so much for having brunch with me. Hi, Stephanie. I feel like we never catch up anymore since I knew you in high school. Yeah, you know, just busy. Have you seen the waiter with our Bloody Marys? So, are you still a weather girl? That's like so amazing for you. I'm so proud of your I've, journey. No, I was never a weather girl. I'm actually a science. OMG, oh, that's so amazing for you. Yes. Anyway, ta-da. Oh, you got engaged. Yeah, I finally told Chet, you cannot buy another Monster Energy hat unless there is a ring on this finger. And so he said, and I quote, fine, whatever. That's so romantic. Right? I'm like a princess. This is a Diamond Princess Chocolate Pure Cut Bing Bong Willy Wong. Nice. Okay, so what about Chet? Did he get a nice wedding band? What? Oh, no, he's a guy. They don't make nice wedding bands for guys. No, actually, they do at manlybands.com. Wait one second. I'm replying to an instant message. L-O-L, you bad. I could really use that Bloody Mary. Sorry, you were saying, what's manlybands.com? Manly Bands offers your hand the freedom to look how you want it. They have just about every type of earthly material imaginable, and even some from space. They've got meteorite, carbon fiber, Damascus steel, wood, antler, even dinosaur bone. OMG, Chet would love that. To get started, go to manlybands.com slash awful. If you don't know your size, you can order their manly ring sizer. It includes 26 plastic rings in whole and half sizes from size 5 all the way up to size 20. And if you're feeling even more creative, you can customize your band from scratch. Choose the style, material, inlay, sleeve, engraving, and finish. With Manly Bands, you can shop with confidence. They provide a free warranty, include a 30-day exchange policy, ship their rings for free worldwide, and include a free silicone band. On top of all that, Manly Bands is running a huge sale from now through Cyber Monday, where you get 25% off your Manly Band. Okay, girl, you have sold me. Where do I get one? So whether it's your first band or an upgrade, go to manlybands.com slash awful or use promo code awful to get 25% off now through Cyber Monday. That's 25% off at manlybands.com slash awful or use promo code awful. Awesome. Ooh, ooh, I just had an idea. Are you on TikTok? You could do the weather on TikTok. I'm not. A w you know what, Stephanie? That's a great idea. Yes. I. Yes. Okay. All right, everybody, gather around. This is Mrs. Elliot. We're going to be making a movie about her son's fantastic recovery from brain surgery. Oh, that's right. That's not fantastic. That's a great idea. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Truly, Hoovy's story is one of perseverance and the goodness of God. I'm sorry. Uh, um, did, you, <laughs> did you say Hoovy? Oh, yes. That's his nickname ever since he was a kid. He got his arm stuck in a vacuum cleaner. Oh, that's cute. Cute, is it? 
it seems kind of like bad parenting to me. Any, like anyways, class. Rick, tell us your story, Mrs. Mrs. Elliot. Right, right. So Hoovy had a brain tumor. And when the doctor removed it, he told us that if Hoovy continued to play basketball, he could die. Wow. Oh, that's rough. So so what did he end up doing instead? He played basketball. What? Uh, oh, so it turned out the doctors were wrong and he was actually fine to play basketball. Yeah. Oh, oh no. He was very much in danger. So, so wait, you just, you guys just let him play basketball even though that could kill him? Well, he really liked basketball. Sure. Yeah. Mm. No, a lot of 17 year olds know what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Okay. I, I, but, but I am sure that Hoovy is now an NBA player, right? So it was all worth the risk. Oh no, he he played a little in college, but no, he's not a professional basketball player. What? Okay, uh, okay, so let me be clear here. You risked your son's life for a sport he would give up on his own a few years later anyway? Yes. I got I got to be honest, I'm not sure how we can make a movie about that. Well, maybe you can put like sad and exciting music in it? Oh, yeah, no wait, that'll work. Yeah, sad right. and exciting music, that does it every time. I'm a bad mom. Such a bad mom. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And in an accidental early hand tip, we're going to open up on one of those bullshit productivity <laughs> seminars. We're like at fucking the Amway regional convention or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know how like if you sell enough Cutco knives, they'll give you six minutes on stage at a convention center <laughs> off the Vegas Strip? That's where we're going to start our movie. I was very confused. I was, you know, I feel like you guys are like these weird anthropologists who discovered this whole culture. Every time I watch a movie, I'm like, oh, all of this exists just below the surface and none of us even knew about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're here. So, yeah, so she's given her motivational speech. So already bad. But then she starts off with sort of a let me tell you about my kid. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm I don't smoke, but I take a smoke break now then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her point starts with basically my life didn't start till I had a baby. And I wrote, "Ooh, ooh, who had zero seconds for sexism? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's like, but, you know, families are miracles that happen every day. And I'm like, this whole mundane occurrence is a miracle thing really needs to look up the definition of miracle. Guys. <laughs> I was also and now that I have more context, which we all will soon enough, I was very confused by why this woman was basically doing it because it, it said it like business seminar talk. Yeah, right. Yeah. She's just going to tell us the story of her kid. Yeah. Like what? I don't care. What does this have to do with business? <laughs> All right, so my theory, because this movie is like an hour and 31 minutes or something, is that the movie was made, they realized it was only an hour and 28 minutes long, and they put this frame of her at this convention on either side of it just to make that 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys, you want an extra $7 from Amazon? Because this is how you get an extra $7 from Amazon. <laughs> so then we get we, we have this little home movie intro as she's talking about her and her husband having a baby. And her husband is played by Patrick Warburton. Yep. Kronk, Joe from Family Guy. So how did you run out of Kronk money, <laughs> Patrick Warburton? It's funny because I like, obviously everybody knows who this guy is, but I didn't know where I knew him from. Is he in like insurance commercials? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> he is the deep voice guy in so many things. And it does an excellent job in this movie, but every time he speaks, no matter how tragic the scene, I'm like, hey, hey it's Joe from Family Guy. Yeah. I don't even think he does an excellent job in this no. movie. To be fair, he I think you're just you're just like taken by his like cool voice. Because the truth is he has no emotion in his voice ever. I think honestly it's it's more of a case of like, you know, you're comparing him to the other actors in this film. That's fair. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, by comparison, he's like Anthony Hopkins. So maybe I just, <laughs> I've so done that right. in my head. Yeah. So I love that at the beginning, she's giving, like we said, this like weird kind of, it's just all exposition. Like, let me mm. give you all the background so that we can dive into the story because we only have so much film. And she's talking about her kids and she literally says the line, Jen was a born runner and jumper. What? <laughs> What's a jumper? <laughs> a like, born what jumper? <laughs> yeah, like, what a weird thing to say about your daughter. <laughs> Cut to the maternity ward. We see this kid bouncing off the walls. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? That's on me. That's on me. She's another born jumper. We get them all the time. 
Yeah. So and, and honestly, I love this fucking Meg Griffin character that we get here. Th- this actor is <laughs> terrible, but they just keep like sticking to her in like, you know, her brother has a whole movie about him. So they want to make sure she gets a few things, too. There's mm-hmm. just. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously what happened? She was like, so they're making a movie about Hoovy. Am I in it? And the parents, as they were working on the screenplay, was like, are you in it? Desperately <laughs> scribbling in pencil. Of course <laughs> but, you're in it, honey. The time I got that. Born runner and jump. <laughs> <laughs> right so but we learned that she's a born runner and jumper and her brother Hoovy, we'll get to the name in a minute <laughs> was born with the power of divine basketball sight yeah apparently also i just want to throw this out there they do that thing that movies do where they take older actors and they try and show home videos of when they're younger and like look I've aged like a tuna fish sandwich on a car dashboard, but these people do not look like high school sweethearts, which is what the narrative is telling us. Yeah. They look like high school sweethearts who did their prom inside the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> so. Yeah, but so then mid opening monologue, we see Hoovy collapse on court as if to say, don't worry, this movie will eventually have things going on. <laughs> and then we get what I'm calling second credits. Mm, yep. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. This was the original credits before they realized they didn't quite make 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. So we've got credits rolling over this this ranch that they live at. Hoovy's waking up with a basketball already in his hand. And the thing that I can't get past in this whole scene, it's the only thing that matters to me. And it matters multiple times throughout the movie is why is his bedroom so ugly? <laughs> like why in every film and actually in real life to add to that are do teenage boys have the ugliest bedrooms? Okay, <laughs> as someone who had bright yellow walls, a bright blue ceiling and a Quest 64 and Turok 64 poster <laughs> next to his bed, uh, not everyone can. Yeah, I think, okay? I think, I think no. we owe our old an apology. <laughs> <laughs> so he has he has plaid wallpaper. Yep. And a brown metal bed. Do they make brown metal beds? Yep. Did he buy a regular metal bed and spray paint it brown? (laughs) Because he was like, that's too gay. I need to make it more masculine. Yeah. Like, I just couldn't. What was that? Do you sell a bedroom set that's just a smoking pipe? Yes, we do. Here, come right this way. (laughs) So he goes outside and and dad challenges him to some early morning basketballing. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the farm. So they're like, dribbling on grass. I'm not sure how that works, but yeah. they're making it work. Yeah. And then we we also, again, with this desperate effort to make the sister a character too, we have her waking up for her morning run and she doesn't like running anymore. She wants to be in the play instead. I wrote in my notes, based on her performance in the movie so far, I would not recommend switching <laughs> from running to <laughs> acting. <laughs> What I love so much is this entire movie. The premise of this movie is that even if you were, you know, you could die at any moment from falling, you should always follow your dreams unless you're a girl, in which case you should stay on your fucking track team. Yeah. Or give up your dreams. Who cares? You don't exist. <laughs> right. Because well, we never revisit this. She's like, but I want to be in the play. And they're like, no, you're going to run. And she's like, okay. And that's it. You're right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, kids, whoever of you gets the rarest disease this year. <laughs> We will focus on their sports career. Yeah. So, oh, and of course, this is also where we learn that Hoovy is having a really bad case of brain blurs. Yeah. You know what? Even before, or maybe this is supposed to be part of the brain blur, but there's the part where the dad is trying to give him like dad sports advice. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you're the best of the best, but you're, you're only going to be bad if you don't figure out how to go left. Do you guys remember this weird scene? He's like, every time you go right, they're going to figure it out. You got to go left. And he's like, going left is hard. And I'm like, wait, this this kid's supposed to be amazing at basketball and he can only turn right? <laughs> like, I'm so confused. I can't turn left, all right, Maury? You know I can't turn left. <laughs> well, and of course, I thought this was their sloppy way of setting this up that like later in the movie, he's going to go left and it'll be like using the fucking crane technique. To my knowledge, they don't. No, no, I don't think anything happened. Like, there's just a lot of there's a lot of spike, uh, like setting up the ball that never gets spiked in this. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is also, and we've done so many "My Kid Almost Died" movies now. This is also that great exposition where they're like, "Our kid did have a lot of symptoms that a good parent would have looked into, <laughs> but 
but you don't be a jerk, okay? Don't be a jerk. Yes. Sometimes you wait until your kid's tumor is the size of a golf ball before you look into it. An orange, the size of an, an orange. orange. Yeah, it was that big. Yeah, well, right, because he's like, you know, he falls down. He's just like, oh, my vision got weird and I fell down again. And his dad's like, I'll tell you what, you know, we're going to take you to the doctor about the, one of those things if they get any worse. I'm like, that's a first brain blur solution. <laughs> Okay, look, when both nostrils start spontaneously bleeding, that's when we're going to go see Dr. Hutchinson, okay? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. And just as you're thinking, well, at least we didn't meet him at breakfast. They all sit down for breakfast. Sure do. <laughs> and then they take Hoovy to the goddamn eye doctor. They're like, hey, eye doctor, he's just fallen down when he tries to stand up. This is probably vision related, right? And the do <laughs> eye doctor's like, I'll take your money, sure. <laughs> yep. Follows my secret theory and do not tweet at me because you know it's true. Eye doctors are faking it. There's no such thing as optometry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Eli, so much education, so little time. <laughs> so, dad's taking Hoovy to school. He's got his new glasses. He doesn't like them very much. He looks like a nerd. Yeah, they're yeah. nerdy. He's going to get his ass kicked. Right. He's also where he gives him his grandfather's crucifix. Christian movie. Oh, I got so excited. I was hoping that it was like it going to be cursed. And then I realized it's not Halloween anymore. No, no. <laughs> not that kind of movie at all. <laughs> well, and, it's, and he, his dad says, hey, you know, I know this is a pretty random time to do this, but I want to give you my dad's cross necklace. And he's like, why would you do that right now? He's like, Cause so that everybody will know that it is a Christian movie. Totally counts. That's Sorry, it's, it's been four minutes, and if we don't show a crucifix, the Dove Channel people shut it off and start crying. So we <laughs> to get got to get it in there. So Hoovy goes to school, and immediately, like his friend comes up and says, "Hey, Hoovy, have you heard about your new rival? He's a point guard just like you, but way better." Yeah. <laughs> and Hoovy's like, "I guess as long as he's not the only other person of color in the movie, that will be fine." <laughs> Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> so, and okay. So we, we, and then we like immediately cut from that to the basketball tryouts, right? Which are so confusing because nothing up to this point has told us that this is the first day of school or right. anything. No. Like it's, it's like mid season already, but yes. they don't, I'm so confused because the coach is like, hi, I'm your coach. Let me introduce myself as your coach. And I'm like, how do they not know their coach? Right. <laughs> did, like, the, did the other coach die? What happened? <laughs> and like, they've been talking for a while about how this kid is like the star player of the team. So how, why is he trying out for the team? He's already the star player of. Mm -hmm. And also the coach is the bailiff from Night Court. It's Mac. Yep. Did you guys recognize Oh, that? was he? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, how do I know this guy? And then I looked him up. And what's so sad is he died this year. Oh. Yeah, from cancer. Oh, that's sad. He was also, he was, you know, older. Yeah, well, and right. He, you right, know, yeah. you can tell. But like, it's pretty sad. I liked him in Night Coach. He was actually a, like one of the better actors in this film. I mean, it was, he had a yeah, terrible right. script he was working with, but. Well, exactly. The script was ridiculous. He starts giving his little coach speech. For, and, and by the way, the music behind him would embarrass Captain America during this fucking <laughs> speech, right? If you buried a soldier to this music, they would burst <laughs> out of their coffin and be like, a little bit much, a little bit much. <laughs> But yeah, he does this whole thing about the power of we and how you don't just represent yourself out on the court. You represent your family nine generations back and their home nation and the pride of the veterans that died in World War II. It's just fucking ridiculous. Face down in the mud. <laughs> very weird. It's a very weird speech. The kids all look very confused. Yeah. And apparently, by the way, basketball tryouts in this school happen in the middle of the fucking school day. Yep. Fourth <laughs> period basketball tryouts. I remember that class. <laughs> Why? So, yeah, because we cut right from that to he's back in school. Maybe this is another day. I don't fucking know. But this is where he's just like he runs into this girl and he's like, oh, are you the love interest? She says, sure am the love interest. <laughs> nice. Are we going to fuck? No, no. This is a Christian movie. So am I going to have a personality? No, no. This is no. a Christian movie. So. I mean, this. Yeah. And this was like just pure reinforcement about the terrible acting in this film. <sighs> just she's almost as bad, if not worse than him. I don't know how they did that. Crazy billionaire remake. I replace her with a hand puppet. <laughs> yeah, seriously. He just pulls up a hand puppet every scene Completely she's in. Completely unnecessary. Oh, and what is this weird thing about gravitas? 
Yeah. You guys remember? She's like, you have gravitas. And he's like, gravitas. I love that. And then I made the weird association between, you guys have made me watch a lot of movies that are produced by <laughs> gravitas ventures. But it's this true. is not one of them, right? No. Huh. So I don't get it. I like that you thought this might have been a deep cut, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like when fucking Stan Lee shows up in a Marvel movie, they were yes. like, gravitas. <laughs> yes. Well, and the context that comes up in it, she's like, why do people call you Hoovy? Right. Oh, and he's like, right. Mm. She's like, your real name is Eric. And that has way more gravitas. And this is where he explains that he's called Hoovy because when he was a kid, he got his arm stuck in a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I'm the logistics of that fascinate me. Yeah. Well, and this is how you know that this is a true story because nobody would write that shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just like, it, clearly that's just what happened and this family like is not creative. And they were like, like the Hoover vacuum. Hoovy, ha ha, you're an idiot. This is the most interesting thing that's ever happened right. to our family. Well, now I feel weird about na- nicknaming my kid split lip on the side of his bed. So now I feel weird. <laughs> Sorry, little split lip. You're going to have to go with your real name. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, dad's a firefighter, so we see him off heroing. Mm -hmm. This will never matter. Nope. No, but he does some A-plus firefighting. I reckon, yeah. But but that's the thing is that it's it's realistic firefighting, so it's not in any way cinematic. No, not at all. They didn't have the budget for that. Right. There's there's a car on fire, and I'm like, oh, here comes an explosion. Oh, they they couldn't afford an explosion. No, they just sprayed water on it. Sprayed. Yeah. Stuff. Also, I know that this is how fire people actually get fire people out of cars, but that seems inefficient. Do they always have to rip the door off? Not always. I feel but... like you try the handle. First. Yeah, right. They could have opened, just opened the door. They tried opening. He needed the jaws of life. Oh, okay. This is the problem. They spend too much time eating chili and they get they get jumpy with the jaws of life. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So then sometime later, everybody's at a cookout at Coach's place and they, they, they're, they're pestering him about how their kids did in the tryouts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, does my kid make it? Did they make it on, on the team? And it's like every kid that was there made it on the fucking team. Right. <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> There's four people in this town. You all made yeah, nobody it. Nobody cares. Right. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the, everybody's super invested in the, you know, high school basketball around here. So that's that's the talk of the town. This is also where we learn that the new kid, the rival, is Coach's nephew. Oh, and to be clear, he is a troubled youth's. Yeah. <laughs> this is very important. Yes, he got into some trouble back in... Hotlanta. His neighborhood. Hotlanta. Yeah. His mom got scared and said he was going to move with his uncle in Bel Air or some such. And no one, no one in this entire movie will be like, okay, this is the only teen of color, right? The coach is black and this kid is black. No one will be like, hey, let's make him feel welcome now that he's surrounded by our chalky white goodness. Well, of course not. They're just going to be like, he is up to no good. What a normal thing to think about this person. Remember, their town is literally called normal. Yes. It's full of white people. (laughs) Yep. That is their definition of normal. Welcome to the real America. (laughs) Yep. That is this movie. That is this movie. Uh, yeah, well, also, the writers of this film had no problem, apparently, making the only African-American character other than the coach be the troubled youth that was involved in some kind of murder and as a basketball project. Like, every stereotype they could think to knock into this kid, they did. Yep. Of course they did. They'll complete that, like, bingo card of troubled youth at the last 30 seconds of the movie, by the way, but we'll get to it. Yeah, they will. So, and then, of course, this is where Father Stephen Baldwin stands up to give a speech. He will never show up in the film again. Okay. Because of the fact that he will never show up in the film again, I am forced to believe that Stephen Baldwin just wandered onto set <laughs> and was like, excuse me, excuse me, ma'am, attention. I would like to make a speech. I would like to make a speech. <laughs> I've been in several movies with guns and everyone turned out fine. Thank you. (laughs) I'm just saying, maybe hire me more often. (laughs) Just hire me more often, maybe. Oh, Jesus. Who is his character? Is he a used car salesman? Is he the local (laughs) pastor? What is his character? I think he's supposed to be the local pastor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Stephen Baldwin. Yeah. (laughs) So they're having like a barbecue outside of the church. And they all go to the same church, of course, because it's normal, mm. Michigan or Oklahoma or some Illinois. fucking place. Illinois, there you go. And so they're all, okay, they all go to church on at nighttime after school, and Stephen Baldwin says words. Yep. yep. 
and then they finally get to eat. And then also, because we haven't stacked quite enough stereotypes on Donovan, the young man of color, they go to try to be friends with him, and he ain't got time for that, for, for fucking Whitey. They will never give him motivation for being a jerk to everyone. Yep. They're just like, hey, welcome to town. And he's like, mm -mm, I'm a youth from the inner city. You're going to have to break down my walls with your small timey charm. <laughs> I love that you wrote you like you wrote Donovan is eating menacingly. He is. They come over <laughs> he's and they're, totally he's just like nang, nang, chewing on some ribs and staring at them <laughs> like he knows that he's in this movie. Right. He spends so much time staring evilly at this rival kid at the main character. So okay. So now we're basketball practicing some more. His the dude's dad is sitting in on practice. Hoovy's dad. It's just goes to basketball practice to watch his kid practice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird fucking shit though, right? That is yeah, very super weird. weird. And like, does he have a job? I don't know. Maybe there's no fires that day. <laughs> if there's a fire, you know where to find me. I'll be at the basketball court. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just where I live. I love to, I think you deleted it, but when I was looking at the, at our notes last night while I was watching this movie, <laughs> Eli had put as the scene marker just the word basketball. <laughs> and Noah, you were like real clear. Thank yeah, you thanks, for that. Thanks for that specificity there. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so funny. Oh, so no, but now now here's when the stakes are not raised because this movie has no stakes. Right. But this is when shit goes down. Yeah, he's having Hoovy's having himself some pretty serious brain blurs. Yeah. He falls to the ground and he starts screaming. And now it's, you know, hey, lucky thing dad was at practice. He's going to take him to the hospital. But it just so happens that there's a terrible blizzard outside. Yeah. And there's this tiny moment as he's taking him. He's like, I'll take him. And they're like, we should call an ambulance. And he's like, liberal ambulances are too slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull up my bootstraps and take the kid myself. Also, there's this terrible blizzard. He can't drive like eight feet without running into a ditch and shit through it. Why are the kids at basketball practice? <laughs> it's so good because they're about to show him hitting, going off the road. And it's obviously one of those things where it came time to shoot that scene. And they were like, why do cars go off the road in the snow? <laughs> Is it because someone just spontaneously turns the wheel? It must be that, right? They just, that's weird. <laughs> well, it's also one of those, all right, y'all can use my truck, but don't dent it up or nothing kind of moments as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it's kind of a nice truck. But this is the weirdest part because they go off the road. He's stuck. The issue is that his, he's stuck. He's like um, dug in. Mm -hmm. And we've all had that before, whether it's like in mud or snow or something like that, where your wheels just turn because they have no traction. So she's he calls his wife. Like, at this point, I'm losing it because he calls his wife to have her send out a tractor. And I'm like, no, but you could still call 911. Yes. <laughs> you have a working cell phone. No, yes. no. Ambulance will take much less time than my wife and a tractor. <laughs> but that's the thing. The ambulance can help you when they get there. It's so bizarre. <sighs> yeah. Because his kid is literally slumped down in the front seat and now there's blood trickling out of his nose and mm -hmm. he's like all woozy and altered. And he's like, it's OK, son. We've got mom and the tractor on her way. Well, what's so fucking funny is he immediately he jumps out and he starts trying to dig the snow out with his bare hands and you know pick the car up and throw it back onto the road and shit. And then his cell phone rings and he's like, right. Cell, cell phone. phone. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why did why I did, think about this? Why did I sh whittle a shelter out of this tarp? This seems. <laughs> um, I didn't have to eat Hoovy. I'm sorry. I ate our son. <laughs> but don't worry. Don't worry. That's when a miracle happened. Oh, oh my yeah. God. The miracle. Yeah. I almost went with best worst miracle. Yes. Oh, man. I should have done that. God has never half assed it more in any Christian movie because <laughs> just then three drunks come walking through the field. And they're like, get back in the truck. We'll push you. That's it. That's it. And, and they do. And they're supposed to be angels. And my husband never saw them again. Therefore, they are angels. She, the, the voiceover literally comes in and says, in case you didn't catch that, they were angels from God. Yeah. Those three guys. Angels from the local bar, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> 
so God was like, hey, uh, Mbub and Beezlebub and fucking Michael, get down there and push that guy's truck. I gave his kid a brain tumor and it's getting really bad. So I need you guys. Oh, you're wasted because it was Taco Tuesdays. You can do it wasted. It's fine. It's so weird. It makes no sense. That's the movie I want is Drunk Angels. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I, just, I don't understand their definition of miracles. Like, is it the miracle that they were able to push? Because, you know, you can't just push a car in that situation. It'll just keep spinning its wheels. You have to put like wood. Yeah, that would work. Or plastic. You have to put something under the tires to give them traction. But they didn't do that. They just pushed it. So is the miracle that angels had the strength to push a truck? I don't understand. <laughs> so, I don't. What is the miracle here? And And just to undercut even their shitty miracle the next scene is this kid going into like a fucking MRI or something right like this miracle of science that's like yeah, oh wait you're right. God <laughs> could give him a fucking push but science fixed him yeah like literally saved his life through invasive brain surgery I really wanted it to cut to the angels like pushing the MRI machine sorry this is our thing <laughs> <laughs> tips him over in it ow alright sorry <laughs> yeah like why didn't the angels fly into his brain case and remove the the tumor that's there the size of an orange growing there. Cut it out with a fucking flaming sword. You've got one of those. Yeah, you're angels. No, I get it. Look, it's like when someone invites you over to help them move, but they give you the beers first, so you're all like sleepy and full of pizza. So you're just like <laughs> you're just like very gingerly putting a single book into a box for the next forty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> This is also where we get the just the beginning of a whole mess of medical nonsense and like a, just a clear indication that nobody consulted with anybody with any knowledge of biology <laughs> to write this movie. Like he's like the kid's nose is bleeding and he's all groggy in the car. And while he's waiting for the angel dudes to come, he's like, don't fall asleep. And I'm like, that's yeah. not a thing. <laughs> so, don't fall. That's when the brain tumor will get you. It's, I know. It's like, why do they always do that in movies? Don't fall asleep. You may never wake up. It's like, sleep is good. Sleep is restful. It's how we heal. <laughs> so, Let people sleep. The don't sleep thing is for concussions. It's not for all brain maladies. But it's not even really for concussions. Like, it's okay to sleep. What? You can sleep. Sleep is healthy. Oh, damn. I'm going to sleep next time I get a concussion. There you go. And when is the last time you had a concussion? I get them quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, I don't we, don't. we don't have time to get into all of that. <laughs> and then, so he's sitting there at the hospital. The dad is, and the doctor comes out. He's like, okay, so quick question. Does your kid have, like, every possible symptom of a giant brain tumor? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, okay, absolutely. yeah, it's a fucking brain tumor. Maybe come to us a little earlier next time. Well, okay. Well, we thought that, you know, potty training was just taking a lot longer for him because oh, of the shitting his pants. So, yeah, he's like, hey, so but he's got a brain tumor. We've got to take it out. It's pushing up against his brain and doing all kind of weird shit. He only has a 30% chance of surviving through the surgery, though. I didn't hear that. I heard that he had a 30% chance of not surviving. Oh, I, I could have had that wrong. I, I but, but, like, even on the lower end, like, I, I was already writing in my notes. Okay, that's not miracle ads. That's just like there's three and a half cases you didn't make movies about, right? <laughs> no, exactly. And it was like, it was really weird. Just everything about it was really weird. He was like, you have a 30% chance of a coma or quote neurological impairment with quote brain surgery as if brain surgery is just one thing right yeah uh-huh. all brain surgery leads to 30 percent chance of coma or neurological impairment it's like no it doesn't <laughs> people get brain surgery all the time there are awake surgeries there are minimally invasive surgeries they're all different sorts of surgeries they don't all have the same prognosis everything about this is stupid also you wouldn't get this type of surgery in that shitty local hospital. No. Right, yeah. So <laughs> tell me the Bloomington Normal Hospital doesn't yeah. do the fucking... Yeah, yeah uh-huh. he, he would definitely be sent to a larger facility. Oh, no, we 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 got a brain surgery chair. We bought... We, <laughs> we thought it was a massage chair. We bought it online. <laughs> Where your face goes down. For Relax Tuesday. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so there's a lot that happens in this scene that I have to talk about. So, okay. First of all, brain surgeon is this actor named Glenn Morshower, who I know. Ooh. So this guy, when I was in like, when I was like 23 years old, I went back to Texas and stayed there for a month between when moving from 
New York to LA and like dropping out of my first PhD program. And I was really bored. And a friend of mine was like, you should take these acting classes from this local acting coach. He's really good. And I was like, I don't know, maybe that'll help me with teaching or something. This is long before I did TV. And so I took this weird local acting class in Dallas, Texas. And Glenn Morshower was like the star of our class. Nice. Oh, really? Yes. The redhead guy who always plays a military guy yeah, or yeah, a cop. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. he's one of those, like, you'll recognize him immediately when you see him, guys. Yeah. For sure. Like, so this was like, re- it's really weird, A, seeing him as a brain surgeon because that's like completely out of character for him. But I totally get it because he was all, re- he was like super Christy even then. Really? Like, I felt a Christy vibe. Like, he was probably super excited about doing this role. And he is a very good actor, to be fair. Like, he's quite good at his, at his job. Sure. The problem is they gave him the dumbest script. Like, he said at he some sure point, did. The tumor is pressing up against his medulla and his optic nerve. Your optic nerve is nowhere near your medulla. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's nowhere near. Like, they were saying it's at the base of his skull, which, yes, it would press up against his medulla, especially if it was the size of an orange. It's huge. Your optic nerve is connects your eyes to it and then it crosses and then it goes to the lateral geniculate nucleus and then tract maybe it was pressing up against his optic tract that's fair but like it just really pisses me off when people don't take the time to like just look up a simple detail like that just google a picture of a brain maybe exactly it's like that's not where your optic nerve is it's in the front of your fucking head well yeah but so the, he, here's the thing though if they were the kind of people that looked up any simple thing about the thing that they were writing about they wouldn't be christians <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So, like this, uh, this is sort of a survivor bias type thing, you know. Yeah. The- and my favorite thing about this scene is at the end, mom goes, "What if we?" Because he's like thirty percent chance that it'll come out all, you know. <laughs> and she's like, "Oh well, what if we don't do the surgery?" And the doctor's like, "Well, then he just he'll die. He just fucking dies. So he'll die. That's what tumors do. They kill you." So- yeah. <laughs> Did you yeah. think I was coming out here to tell you about the optional procedure? This isn't a skin tag, lady. Remember when his nose bled and he fell on the ground? Yeah, Yeah. like more of that plus death, yeah. And also probably, why didn't you bring him here sooner? Right. (laughs) Bad parents, very bad parents. So then we get Hoovy waking up. Dad gives him a few words of encouragement. and, and Or actually, he gives Dad a few words of encouragement, right? He's like, it's okay, Dad. I'm young enough that I haven't really started to question my religious upbringing, and I still believe in heaven, so this will be fine. And the Dad's like, yeah, I'm older than you. Yeah, he's like, Dad, I don't understand. If you really believe in heaven, isn't this like a, a slightly unpleasant blip in me living in paradise forever? And he's like, shut up, shut up. We, we do. <laughs> You're fucking it up. We do believe. <laughs> fucking it up. I just don't want you to be happy for all eternity next to the hand of God. Nope, not that. It is that I shit. Right. Well, and then the fucking the voiceover comes in, like the the mom giving the speech at the Amway convention or whatever. <laughs> she cuts in to be like, you know, there's one of those times in life where there's nothing you can do but pray. And I'm like, is there nothing? Nothing? Because you're in a hospital. It's not a prayer place. She says this <laughs> right before the brain surgery yes! montage. Yeah, they give literally no cred and no props to like modern science, right. to the hardworking surgeons, to like all the technology. Ugh. And they're intercutting like scenes of lights and like hospital technology with like statues of angels. Yes. <laughs> right. Like they're like, and the hospital did their thing and the church did its part as well. There was also stained glass windows. <laughs> Just the church is sitting there with its own mixing bowl, peanut butter all over its hands, and I helped. Right. Well, yeah, that's, exactly. the that's the thing. Bike. The church is the sister to the hospital's brother. It's it's like it's weird parallels course, yeah. within the film. Totes. So yeah. So but so but he gets his brain surgery. We get his brain surgery montage, and of course the whole time I'm like, can we just spend some time? Because brain surgery is fascinating stuff, right? No, they don't have the budget for that. They don't have the budget. For that. Right. It doesn't show <laughs> us any of the good stuff. They do show him face down on a massage table for some reason. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like he's looking through the hole, like the head hole. That's where they do brain surgery. And his eyes are wide open, and I'm like, there's no reason to be doing an awake surgery for this kid. This is not the type of surgery you would do awake. Well, right. Yeah. Cause it's not like they need to know the, like the, the tumor parts are the parts we're going after guys. Yeah. 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 This isn't like a, this isn't implanting, you know, a deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's or anything. This is, we're removing a tumor. Like ki- kids should be asleep. Come on, people. This isn't brain surgery. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Cut. But if you keep them awake, you get to do the funny thing where you poke the part of their head and they forget the math. 
Come yeah. on, that's a good time. Well, that is, yeah, but, that's probably why they did it. But we didn't get any of that. We didn't get right. Any exactly. Of that. They didn't show us any of the good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we do get Doctor Glenn Morshower coming out and going. The good news is it was benign, and I'm like, first of all, he would not know that. You have to send it to pathology. Oh, yeah. What did you What did you interrogate it? You took it under the hot lights. <laughs> I put my pinky in it and then I rubbed it on my gums. It's yeah, it's like he licked it. He licked it, and it it didn't taste like cancer. So kids, cool. Kids, cool. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is a cranio for they grow at the base of the skull. They're common in young people. They do affect vision, but again, not the optic nerve. <clears throat> and then he says something like, uh, uh, everything's fine. We took it out. It's benign. Don't worry. We had to take out some bone, too. And I was very confused because he didn't say skull at this point. He just said <laughs> bone. <Yeah. laughs> a little and femur. I was, just I, for my collection. I, uh... <laughs> I was like, I hope he meant skull and not cervical spine because this kid would have way more issues at this point. But yes, he did mean skull. And this is an important point. This is the linchpin of the whole film. Right. Yes. He had to remove some of the skull because the tumor was attached to it. And so now he has basically an open soft spot on his head, like a window that's going to fill in with scar tissue and maybe some cartilage. But they didn't put a plate over it. They didn't do, and this is, I'm assuming this is based on what actually happened to this kid. Right. They didn't put anything over the exposed portion to protect it. So basically, this kid is walking around without his own bone helmet. Yeah, he's got an insta-kill button. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, and then they say, like, and they're, they're like, so, you know, he's going to be fine. He's going to be all fucked up for a bit, but he'll mostly get better. That being said, he's got the insta-kill button, so you absolutely can't have him, like, you know, play basketball, anything, any head-hits-the-ground type activity you're going to want to avoid. Yeah, he's like, one blow to the head could kill him. Yeah. Right. And I wrote in my notes at this point, honestly, if the rest of this movie is just about Hoovy doing all the things that aren't basketball, I am in. Right. It's just yes. like, at a fair, having a caramel apple. Yeah, there's so much stuff you can do that's not basketball. <laughs> Literally all but one thing. It's fucking great. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what, as we've already suggested... He's fine, except for a few of the basketball playing parts are the stakes of the movie. So with those established, we're going to pause for a quick break. But we're back in a minute with even more Hoovy. Hi, welcome to Shop Mart. Can I help you? Yeah, where's the checkout? Oh, you mean the robot that took my job? It's right behind me. No, I meant the actual checkout lane. Oh, uh, well, we only have one right now and everybody in it is paying in pennies. Yikes. A lot of coupons. Yikes. I was really just hoping to make myself a fresh home cooked meal, you know? Oh, well, if you wanted that, why didn't you try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Oh, wow. That sounds like so much better than trying to operate this broken robot. It sure is. Also, don't don't put anything in there or it'll think you're stealing it and I'll have to walk over super slow and then punch in my employee code while glaring at you. So I just hold my food until it's checked out? Yep, you sure do. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. And as fall transitions to winter, there's nothing better than cozying up with a comforting home-cooked meal. Recipes like chicken ramen and shoyu-style broth and turkey ragu gnocchi make it a no-brainer to skip on paying for takeout. That does sound delicious. It is. HelloFresh sent us a box to try and the food was tasty. I felt like a master chef. Eli, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm buying the same groceries as you so that we can become better friends. That's weird. Yeah, just ignore him. So how do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Did you hear that, Kara? You can go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Yes, I did. I heard that. So, oh, hey, the only working robot is free. Thanks. Nice. Can't wait to eat some of this kale. Yeah, it's kale. It could be kale. Yeah, I think it's kale. Kale. So tell us, doctor, is Hoovy going to be okay? Uh, well, if we get this tumor out, I, I think so. What are his chances? Um, I think I say 30%. Oh, goodness. But I can get you good money for those odds, though. I'm sorry, what? Well, you know, I'm a doctor and, and doctors, we just love to put survival percentages on people almost as much as we love saying things like you've got six months, you'll never walk again. And it would take a miracle. 
You see, it's all part of our complicated betting system that we run here at every single hospital. I have almost 100K on that kid down the hall kicking the bucket today. Oh. I mean, you know, why else would this very real practice of doctors constantly like naming odds of survival happen? It's it's not like this is just a device made up in movies to downplay our essential contributions to medical care, right? No, it's all a complicated series of bets that all doctors secretly have on all their patients ever. I see. Now, uh, how open would you guys be to like uh, fixing the bed a bit? I'm sorry. You know, I just maybe I slipped during surgery. I used the wrong size drill bit, or you know, maybe I just leave you guys in the room with him and a pillow for a few minutes. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking like two to one odds on this, guys. We could make a mint. Oh, doctor, no, we would never. Okay, all right, fine. I'm just, I'm just asking. We'll keep it straight. Um, can I interest you guys in the spread? I mean, we'll hear the spread. Well, yeah, you got to hear the spread. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action three months after the surgery. Hoovy is finally heading home. Mm-hmm. Why does he have a speech impediment? Well, so this is the best part. For this scene, the actor has like a Skype delay speech impediment. And the director was like, hey, man, our movie's going to be seven and a half hours long. And so he doesn't have it in any other scene. No. <laughs> well, he gets over it after this drive home. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, like, it just didn't make sense, like, again, because of where his tumor was. I don't understand why. I mean, maybe Sarah Beller. He has an eye patch and he's walking with a cane. I wrote in my notes, I don't want to be a jerk, but that doctor really oversold the success of that operation. <laughs> <laughs> Three months later and he's rolling around on the ground. E.T. Cone home. Okay, you know. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't worry that much about whether or not he's going to play fucking basketball. <laughs> and I guess that part is real, right? Because, you know, the images I'm of sure, the actual yeah. kid. Like, I think he does wear that thing where he has to wear the eye patch and switch it from eye to eye so that his other eye gains strength. Sort of like you do with kids with strabismus. It's like how you strengthen the eyes while they're healing. Interesting. Yeah, the piano teacher. But mostly all I noticed in this scene was that he's back in his fucking bedroom with that wallpaper and that brown <laughs> metal bed. Well, what I noticed was how lazily written the goddamn dialogue. The kid turns to his dad during this scene and says, Dad, will I ever play basketball again? And the dad's like, yeah, that's the plot. Good <laughs> question. Moving on. Okay, so it's been three months. We've determined that your life is all about basketball. You walk with a cane and speak at the speed of Richard Dawkins. Yeah, yeah, you probably play basketball. I'm sure we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it in the middle of sec too. Yeah, right. So, and, and of course, then he gets home. Mom and the sister run out to greet him and everything. And and he's like, doesn't want anybody's help. Damn it! You know, stop trying to help me walk. And he's like, dude, you're you have a cane. Which probably would be good for them to help you. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You do it myself. I love talking like a speaking spell. I'm awesome. <laughs> It's so weird. It's just, I still don't understand why he can't talk, but whatever. He got a card from Love Interest saying, you are my friend, my friendly friend of friendship, <laughs> Annie Lynn. Yep. And by the way, he looks up from that card and he's like, oh yeah, she wants me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like, what does that really even mean to, you've seen like, Eli, I've shared some of these like horrible Instagram posts where it's the two people who are like, what do we do in our Christian relationship? Yes. We don't kiss. We don't have sex. We don't touch each other, but we play board games. It's like, yep. that's what he is thinking about. You're He's right. Like, yeah, this is like, so oh, hot. We are going to play so much. Sorry. Oh, my oh, God. No, <laughs> her ass at sorry. I'm going to destroy her at Azul. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so then we get a montage of, of him rehabilitating. This would be the first of like 23 montages in the second act of this film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, they've got him like stretching and walking, which I, I'm sure are part of PT. Is being slung over the back of a, <laughs> of a horse like a sack of flour PT? <laughs> I'm sure that this is a balanced thing. I'm just like, there's got to be a less potentially deadly way of doing it, though, right? Right. Oh, for think. sure. And notice, <laughs> is he wearing a helmet when he's no. on the, the no. unpredictable horse? No, no, he's not. Oh, the, there's like actually interviews out there with his mom where she talks about like, yeah, he wouldn't even wear any of the helmets that we tried to get for him. He was embarrassed. Classic. Why the fuck are we holding out him as an exemplar <laughs> then of what to do? Yeah, why would you say that out loud? 
<laughs> Jesus. And also, what kind of parents are you that they're like, oh, couldn't make him wear the helmet, but whatever, right. free choice. <laughs> A lot of this movie is, hey, I feel like this is your decision, not his. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so he goes to school. He's trying to navigate school with his cane and his eye patch and everything. Annie's there. She's still the love interest. Yeah, he's like, can I ask you a question? And she's like, oh, what is it? And he's like, will you help me open my locker? And it's just that it's supposed to be like a cutesy bootsy thing. But then she's like, what's the combination? And I really wanted him to be like, banana 11, the color green. <laughs> You're so Sorry, mean. brain tumor. It took a lot. <laughs> and all I could think of was, don't give her your locker combo. What if she poops in it? That's okay. a fascinating note to me, Kara. I noticed Kara, that before. We- I would like to follow up with you. <laughs> Do you have Why? some childhood trauma that you'd like to share? Was with that us? a prank at your school in Hell, Texas? <laughs> no, I think I was literally channeling every ad I've ever read with Eli Bob. <laughs> oh, you were trying to, you were like, okay, how do I do gam humor? You know, I usually shits in something, right? <laughs> I'm watching this, but you guys are weirdly superimposing in the movie, and I'm thinking about recording the next day, and all that comes to my mind is, she's gonna poop in this <laughs> <locker>. Flaming <laughs> bag of poop. Kara, we bring you on the show so that there's less me. You're here to dilute the me. We're trying to go for a homeopathic me. Okay, 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 I get it. I get it, I get it. I'll talk about the brain some more. It's cool, yeah. I got it. <laughs> All of Kara's notes move on, become like puerile <laughs> in an attempt to be me. She comes out in a thong at the next live show. Shit, I <laughs> Kara, that's not, it's not working for you. This, not, this is not the Different. bit. <laughs> different bit now. Different Damn bit. Damn um, okay, okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. So, okay, so, and then we have to head back home so we can get the first of, I'm going to say, conservatively 17 scenes of mom and dad having ever more financial problems that add to the hospital bills. Yeah, this is the most realistic part of this entire film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's my note is just, wow, our country is sad and broken. But this movie is like on the side of our healthcare system in a weird way. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. It has this great thing, right? Because look, everyone watching this movie is the victim of this system, but they uphold it constantly. Mm-hmm. So they have to be like, I mean, I guess we've got no choice but to mow lawns and pull on our bootstraps harder right honey right Mm -hmm. right we will see throughout this movie they're selling their home they're selling their business they're working 73 jobs and never at any point does this movie like acknowledge that that's a really fucked up way for us to handle shit like that it really it the whole time is just like and they never asked for a handout yeah 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 yeah. that like jesus will carry him through right Mm -hmm. (sighs) mm-hmm And it's so sad, too, because the kid feels guilty. He's like, I I hate that my brain tumor is financially crippling us. Right. And it's like, don't worry about it, honey. And it's just sad. Right. It's like, this is a weird, it's like an unintentional social commentary that they they had no idea they were making. Another note I have here is like, wow, he feels guilty for having a tumor. Land of the free and home of the brave, you say. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yep, yep, yep. Ah. Yeah, I wanted them to keep almost getting it. It's just like, oh, gosh, honey, if only we hadn't been giving away 10% of our income at least for our entire (laughs) lives. We could have put something away. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, our cousins from England are visiting. Did you hear that we've been bankrupted by Hoovy's tumor? What do you mean you don't understand? (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> and then, oh. and then she's like, he's like, what if I never get better? We're doing this together. I'm really, it's really hard for me. I can't read. I can't do anything. And she's like, if it comes down to reading Dr. Seuss and using training wheels, it's what we're going to do. And I'm like, that's really patronizing, right? Do you think he's going to go backwards from where he is now? Because that's not how this works. I know. She, he, he's having a hard time reading a biology textbook. <laughs> right. Like an advanced biology textbook. And she's like, well, Dr. Seuss for you, you dumbass. Like, <laughs> it's the weirdest scene. Like, what is happening? And then we get this actually very touching scene where I momentarily started to feel bad for making fun of this movie. This is the one where he goes back to his basketball practice and they they let him know that they never took him off the team and they still want him to be in the team photo, even though he can't play anymore. And they they, they go out of their way to make sure that he feels included. And that was very sweet. Oh, really? You like had good feelings about that? I did. Okay, here is the problem, though. (laughs) 
Because the real story that this is based on, they were like, Hoovy's the coach now. And look, I get it. We had a coach for my teams. Okay. I get it. Fine. You make him the coach. But Hoovy quit. That is what happens in this movie and in real life is he was the, you know, participation trophy coach. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, you guys are a bunch of assholes. I'm uh, in all the way or nothing. (laughs) (laughs) This would be like if at the end scene of Rudy, they had been like, you know what? Go in, kid. And he was like, no, I want to be the quarterback. (laughs) (laughs) So and then meanwhile, back home. Dad realizes that they're going to need a new septic tank. And I just I wrote my notes like, oh, if this just keeps coming back over and over again with bigger shit, I'm going to love this movie. It does. And I didn't. So sorry for writing that in my notes. (laughs) Yeah, because this is the first hint that I think they're trying to do like a Job thing. Yeah, I think dad is Job. You're right. He is. Wow. Yes. Or Hoovy's Job. Yeah, it's like they gave they like sort of killed his kid, but not really. It's like, he's like, dad is Job, but with like nowhere near the same stakes. Job light. As the yeah. Actual Job. Yeah. Like all this terrible stuff is happening to dad for like, it's like, it's not happening to his child. It's like a part-time Job. Yeah. It's like, oh, my kid might never be a basketball star. That I really, that affects me personally yes. in a really major way. Well, so here's the fucked up thing is that this movie is based on the book that the dad wrote. Yeah. Right. So th- this movie is all presented from the, yeah, it sure was tough on me when my kid had a brain too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just like Job. <laughs> like that's what that is. Dad's yeah. thesis statement is I am just like Job. And the septic tank will just be the first in a series of problems that happens that will ever more point to capitalism as the issue. Like <laughs> yeah. the last thing that happens to their farm might as well be like a new money Zuckerberg comes in and shorts their farm. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, no, I invested in a Dogecoin and everything went away. Oh. It's so true. Like, this is clearly an example of being failed by our capitalist system. But instead, it's like God is testing. Us. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> like, are you kidding Where me? Where were you when Adam Smith created the whirlwind? <laughs> and there are, there are actual solutions to some of these problems. Like, the mom is literally saying, like, I can get a job. Let well, then, me yeah. go get a job. Yep. And the dad's like, no wife of mine is going to work, bitch. <laughs> like, it's insane. That's so fucked up. Like, how how much is the, does that undercut every single other <laughs> thing in this fucking movie? They're like, oh, yeah, we're just so desperate for money. And she's like, well, I guess I could work. And he's like, no, you can get back no. in the fucking kitchen and take off those shoes. Yeah, it's literally. You know that you'll turn into a lesbian again the second you get into an <laughs> office. Honey. Come on. <laughs> so. All right, now we're back to basketball again. Yes. Oh, this is where you said thanks for narrowing it down, Eli. <laughs> oh, yeah. This next scene is also just called basketball. Yep, there it is. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so we get back to the basketballing. And this is the part where Hoovy is going to be the participation trophy coach. And I thought they were going to go for the bit because, like, Donovan needs to be coached up good. And uh, Hoovy's like, don't worry, coach, I'll take care of this. And Hoovy just kind of yells at Donovan and it doesn't help in any way. Donovan's like, fuck you and then walks off. Yeah, nothing changes. It doesn't help. Everyone is unlikable. It's the weirdest scene. He's like, (laughs) you listen to me because he's still doing the voice. He's like, you listen to me and that then you need to play better and Donovan's like, I understand that you're all trying to do a nice thing (laughs) but this is not helpful to me as a basketball player or a troubled youth. (laughs) Well, right, but Donovan's character is such an asshole that he's like, I'm sick and tired of this fucking brain tumor recovery and bullshit, you know, just kind of marches up. Reaches over and taps him in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he made me do it. He made me do it. And I actually realized in this scene that Donovan's not the only black kid. Like, I thought that they were that obvious and they made him the only black kid, but there's like one other black kid on the team. Right, yeah, no, he just doesn't have any speaking lines. Yeah. No, yeah, he's very grainy in the background, but he's also shaking his head disapprovingly, like, I'm with the white guy on this one. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> they will slowly but surely insert more black extras into this movie <laughs> as like, though they're making a college brochure and panicking. Like, later, <laughs> you're just like, they're walking through the background and then walking backwards again, <laughs> walking <laughs> forwards again. They change outfits. <laughs> There's just like whole white characters, like who, like number seven was white and now he's just black for right, some yeah. reason. <laughs> like what? 
Oh, and then we have to get the scene where mom's at the bank learning that even if they literally sell their farm, it wouldn't pay off the medical bills. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, how shitty is their farm? Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I guess it's like multiply mortgaged. Oh, oh. And then we see, this is just so much for me. We see dad standing next to son. And I know they've been in a million scenes together, but it really hit home for me that dad is literally twice the height yes the son yeah. and I'm like yes. why is everybody so intent on this kid playing basketball right? mm-hmm. <laughs> like he comes up to his dad's belt buckle yeah it doesn't make any sense kind of rains on the basketball dreams a little bit there and then the kid i mean now it's become a caricature like this kid is napoleon dynamite at this point to oh, me oh wow he's yeah. just like go everyone leave me alone go and he's always throwing himself down on his bed and like getting mad at people for yep. i don't know being concerned yeah. So yeah, but he's he's sure is bummed, and he can't play basketball anymore. So him and his dad go out fishing. No, horse they fishing. go out. Eli, what did you say? They go out horse doing? fishing. Horse horse fishing. Horse fishing. <laughs> yes. I spit. I was drinking tea while I was typing, and I spit it on my keyboard. <laughs> I don't know why, but horse fishing is the funniest thing at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's it's a challenge because you know they clip clop and they scare the fish away. It's how <laughs> yeah. a real man does it. Yep. They are. They're walking around on the backs of horses with fishing poles. What are they doing? <laughs> so and and again, this is how poorly written this script is. They go out fishing and the and the kid says, "Boy, Dad, I sure can't wait to get back to playing basketball again." <laughs> Like the characters are just constantly saying their larger motivations out loud. <laughs> but finally, dad explains to him, apparently they haven't told him about the insta kill button on the back of his head yet. <laughs> no, they have not. They never got around to it. I feel like that's a day one thing. Yeah, like hopefully he doesn't just like randomly bump his head because this is really important and all. <laughs> yeah. And to be clear... As the doctor clarified, this is not a forever situation. There is going to be soft tissue that grows over it. It is just right now while he's recovering that he can't play basketball. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I think at this point, we're like months out of the surgery. Right. Yeah. Well, we did a three month time jump. Yeah. (sighs) So, yeah. So, okay. So and then we have just in case that Job thing was a little too subtle. We have this scene where Hoovy goes to talk to the coach, right? And he's like, I don't think I, I could be around this basketball anymore. It just makes me want to play it really bad. And so the coach tells him the story of Job. And I'm like, that's not a real good story for you guys. I don't know why you guys think that telling the story where your God tortures some guy to win a bet helps your cause, but it never does. I also, no. I genuinely appreciated the edit they made to the Job story where they were like, and then Satan said, let me do a bunch of bad stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. There was Satan that did that. Oh, let me let me check my uh was <laughs> <laughs> doing the boils and the children killing in the house collapsing. Like, <laughs> also, by the way, I, I should I just have to point this out. Is anybody if anybody else out there has read the Bible before? The book of Job is the, is, I believe it's the oldest book in the Bible. It's also some of the weirdest shit ever written. The rant that God gives to Job is like he's trying to start a fight with him in a Denny's goddamn parking lot. It's the weirdest thing ever written down. There is no reason for Christians to ever direct people towards the book of Job. But they love it. They I love know. it. They and love it doesn't it. make any sense. I guess, I guess in their mind, the takeaway is that like no matter how much God tests you, if you keep your faith, you'll like win in the end or something. But I don't get it because basically he murders, like God does everything terrible. It's like pestilence, like Job loses like his livelihood. He loses all his his livestock. He murders all his kids, kills his wife, like does all this terrible stuff. And then, and then he's like fighting with his friends because his friends are like, bro, you got to keep the faith. And eventually he's like, no, fuck God. But then he comes back around and then God almost kills all his friends. But then Job's like, no, don't kill my friends. They're cool. And he's like, okay, I guess I won't kill your friends. And then at the end, he gives him new kids and somehow that's supposed yes. to make yep. up for the fact that, that his actual kids were dead. Yeah, if you want to know how stupid the book of Job is, the happy <laughs> ending is he gets brand new kids and a brand new <laughs> wife. So it's all better. Yes, that's the story. <laughs> And so, okay. Oh, remember Sis being a character in this movie? Oh, yeah, sister. Yeah, she can jump. She was a born jumper. Born jumper and <laughs> runner. Okay. So we get this weird daddy-daughter date with with her and, and the dad. 
And there's no, again, this is just there because she, you are also in the plot. We did not forget to write you in the script. So this is the time that dad, while they were in the middle of all these dire straits, got her like a sweet ass Jeep. Oh, yeah. He's like, she's like, dad, we're parked over there. Where are you going? And he's like, we're going to your new car. And it's like a nice car, like way nicer than any car I ever drove. Right. When I was a kid, like, how can they afford this? They're losing their farm. Well, that's what they could get when they sold their farm. <laughs> well, so, OK, but here's the they try to address that within the film, right? Because he's like, well, you know, uh, old man so and so gave it to me because I pulled those stumps for him. I'm like, no, the fuck he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and also, why wouldn't you then sell that for money? <laughs> right, right. To cover more of those medical bills. Yeah. He also says, uh. Oh, honey, don't you remember? Be not afraid is what the angel says. And I was like, uh, sorry, real quick. You're talking to your teenage daughter. Be not afraid is what the angel says right before he rapes a teenager. That's Just true. Not a great. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. No, that's what he tells the Virgin Mary before God rapes a kid into her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It's it's also just bad life advice in general. Like like I it just it just shows the minimal depth. It just the the narrowness and the superficiality of everything about this movie that she's like life is hard, isn't it, daddy? Things are scary right now and he's like what did the angel say? Be not afraid. And she's like, "Oh, I feel better now." Yeah, right. <laughs> Shit, I didn't think not to be afraid. <laughs> well, what? Well, and okay, so and then we get dad, dad, and the hell out of Hoovy too, right? The oh, yeah. Oh, I hate this scene. You guys, this, I completely tuned out this whole story. <laughs> I have no idea what happened in this scene. Can you explain it to me? This is one of the dumbest analogies I've ever come across, right? Yeah, I don't get it. So, okay, so he's going to, dad's telling Hoovy the story of this tightrope walker. And he's like, yeah, the tightrope walker was really good. And he was going to go across Niagara Falls. And everybody's like, oh, awesome. And he asked the audience, he's like, all right, who thinks I can make it? And, and everybody's like, yeah, I think I think you can make it. And he's like, all right, who wants to get into a wheelbarrow and let me push them across? And nobody would do it because they didn't have enough faith. Oh, my God. That's what happened in this scene? That's the story. Oh. That's the story. And the conclusion of that story is I need to get in the wheelbarrow of your... Type. wellness <laughs> right <laughs> oh right because this is about the dad i forgot this whole yeah. thing is just his narcissism right yeah well right right exactly and and the dad says look i've been worried this whole time because if you fall on the ground in a way that would be harmless for most people you will instantly die i need to get over my fear i need to stop being such a puss about that right yeah that's the message. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you've clearly like decided that you don't want to wear a helmet. I need to be OK with that. Now. Yep. Yeah. What? And then and this advice and, and basically that's his way of saying. So if you want to play basketball again, I don't care what your you know, the hole in your skull has to say about it. It's your choice. Yep. Yeah. This kid who like has no concept of mortality because the best assessors of risk are 17 year old children. <laughs> 17 year old boys. To be yeah, clear. Right. 17 year old boys. And by the way, you're over at the, this kid was 13 when this happened. Tight. Oh, really? He was yeah. 13? Yep. Oh, my God. And pursuing his dream of being a basketball star it makes it even dumber, doesn't it? it? Way dumber. <laughs> yeah. In the film, they make him seem much older. Right. Yeah, yeah. The actor's much, much older than that. But yeah. When I was 13, my dream was eating Lucky Charms as much as I wanted. <laughs> Wish I had these parents. Yeah, right. So, yeah. So, and then, by the way, so this devolves into a montage for some real dad rehab, damn it. And this includes, central to this fucking montage, him walking on railroad tracks. Yeah. Like, up on the track, like, trying to balance on that, which is incredibly, like, if he falls, he'll die. Yep. That's so fucking dumb. Yeah, he might as well be bouncing a ping pong ball off the soft spot in his head as part of this training <laughs> montage. Ever bigger balls, yeah. And it's just a tiny note, but at the end, they do that thing. That, and a lot of movies do it. It's not just Christmas movies where he breaks his cane. And I, why do movie? I break this cane and I burn my wheelchair. Nobody needs these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I don't want to help somebody else with a disability. Fuck those kids. They're not strong like me. They need to pull up their bootstraps. Yeah. Wait, can I ask, too, this part that doesn't make sense, and maybe it's just because the montage is, like, confusing and out of order, but they cut back and forth between him walking on a balance beam, all alone, unassisted, no problem, and literally staggering around with his cane. Yes. Yeah. 
And I'm like, it doesn't work. It's not like the balance beam magically makes you be able to walk normally. <laughs> nope. And then as soon as you get off of it, you need the cane again. But that is the story they're telling me. And I'm very mm-hmm. confused by it. There's also like as he gets, you know, because it's a montage. So he's getting better and better at walking on the railroad tracks, etc. There's also a point where he's actually literally using a wheelbarrow on the track. Like he's pushing that on the track along with him. I'm like, OK, wait, so. So they carried a wheelbarrow, wheeled one all the way to the railroad tracks, just in keeping with the analogy. Yeah, yeah. That was for us. That was for us. Why did you do that? God damn it, Dad. Why didn't you have an egg and spoon analogy? This thing's heavy. (laughs) Shit. (sighs) And to be clear, he's pushing her in the wheelbarrow, the love interest, in the wheelbarrow on the narrow little side of the track. And then they fall and he hits his head. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and they just move right past it. Like, this kid falls down and hits his head multiple times when he's not supposed to fall down and hit his head. And they just kind of roll past it and don't say anything. Right. Right. All right. So then we get him. He's middle of the night. It's pouring down rain outside. And he wakes up and suddenly he can see again. And his vision is good. And it's because of the miracle from God, not all that rehab and all those doctors and all them (laughs) surgeries. (laughs) <laughs> no, it was the lightning cure. But he runs out into the rain to take his first shot of the basketball because we've been watching him shooting and missing the basketball. And I really, really wanted him to miss that first shot. Just like, oh, I can't actually see. I'm just a little out of practice. Sorry. Yeah, that right. Was, yeah, it turns out it it's raining. A lot of it is muscle memory. <laughs> and also, like, yeah, the whole family goes out with him in this pouring thunderstorm to watch him shoot baskets for the first time. And I so wanted, like, the sister to get hit by lightning and the movie starts over with her needing a surgery or something. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to rehab till she can run again or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, and eventually this devolves back into the montage. The girl gets in the wheelbarrow. It, it's so, everything about this is so goddamn Ew, stupid. And don't they kiss or something? I don't want they to watch do. it. Kiss, they yeah. do. They get dinged by the Dove Foundation for a kiss in this, uh, in this they moment. They do. I don't want to watch... T- Christian teenagers kiss ever. Yeah. Okay. Well, for any reason. Maybe you don't it's, judge people who do. It's like watching it's like eating <laughs> it's like watching people eat mayonnaise though in a lot of exactly. ways. Exactly. It's like it's like Okay, both up. things. I feel, it feels very judgy <laughs> right now. So you don't have to you don't have to watch it if you don't want to do it. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, the stakes have now advanced from you can't play basketball to okay, you could, but it would be spectacularly dumb. So I guess we're pausing for another break while you recalibrate. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Allie find a personality in time? What the hell ever happened to the sisters' hopes and dreams? Are the three mystery Blizzard guys really the only miracle in this film? (laughs) Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the spectacularly predictable conclusion of Hoovie. Just saying, I support a lot of people on OnlyFans and you're judging them right now. (laughs) This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Lulu, doing Kara stuff. Kara stuff is my favorite stuff. Kara! Jesus! So, sorry, did we surprise you? By hiding in the backseat of my car and yelling, Kara, when I got in? Yes, yes, that surprised me. We were looking for change. We weren't hiding. Did, did you know you left one of your Emmys in here? You did. <sighs> what do you guys want? Change. We just said that. You're a bad listener. Can I give uh, you that so feedback? Actually, while we have you here, we have this new sponsor, BetterHelp. They do like online therapy. Yeah, and we were hoping, since you're a brain dentist, you could tell us if therapy works. Okay, so first of all, not a brain dentist. Second of all, yes, talk therapy can be extremely helpful for people dealing with mental illness or just folks who need an impartial third party to talk about what's going on in their lives. Mm, okay, but therapy is mostly for, like, crazy, crazy people, people, though, right? right? Yeah. Like, like, oh, no, I'm a toaster. Not super healthy people like me, right? Oh my God, that was so insensitive and not at all appropriate. But Eli, what actually, they just say, right? therapy is something that anybody can benefit from. And the myth that it's only for people who have severe mental illness, it's harmful. It keeps a lot of people from getting the help that they need. Well, plus with BetterHelp, you can start communicating in under 48 hours. And there's a broad range of expertise available, which might not be locally available in many areas. So if you need like a, a therapist who's LGBTQ friendly or secular, they can help you find someone. Exactly. And we've got a special offer for God Awful Movies listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. All right. Well, I'm sold. So uh, where are we going? I'm actually going to see one of my patients right now. Ooh, brain cavities. Eli, for the... 
You know what? Yes, yes. It, the brain cavities. We're going to work on that. Do it. Yeah, he's got them bad. <sighs> you guys have brain cavities. What? Nothing. And I think it's time that you get into your wheelbarrow. Well, thanks, Dad. Now, let's get inside. Well, it's just... What is it, Hoovy? Well, I mean, you know that metaphor makes no sense at all, right? Uh, no, because faith. Right. Faith is like getting in the wheelbarrow. That's what you're saying. But like the story about the tightrope walker is about risk, right? It's it's risky to put your own life in danger. It's not about whether or not I believe in the tightrope walker. It's about whether or not I'm willing to get hurt or die based on the information that I have. Exactly. That. That is faith. Wait, okay, so just to be clear, faith is putting yourself in the way of danger based on incomplete information? I mean, yeah. Okay, no, actually, as I said it out loud, I heard it. You're, you're, a, you're a bad father. I am a bad father, yes. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open back up on Hoovy going to the basketball practice to tell Coach Wilson that he's ready, damn it. Yeah! Mom and dad are there for this practice again. <laughs> but Donovan doesn't want no Toomey on his team. Toomey is the slur I invented for people with brain tumors. So yeah, he, <laughs> does, he, doesn't, he doesn't want no Toomey on his team. It's But I didn't even get this because like the whole point about this was not this kid getting back in shape and learning how to walk again and being able to play basketball physically. It was that he literally is missing a piece of his skull to protect his brain. That's right. the only reason he wasn't supposed to play basketball. That didn't change because he learned the balance beam. No, No, it did not. Well, and then so, okay. And there's a a scout there, a college scout checking out Donovan, the rival kid that that angrily chews and stuff. And he's really mad, Donovan is, because Tumor Boy is making him look bad, you know? Yeah. He has this moment where he's like talking to the other teammates about it. He's like, oh, he's going to bring us down and I can't afford that. And and Hoovy was apparently sitting in the bleachers without him noticing. I feel like you look over your shoulder one time real quick before you start making fun of Tumor Boy. But I also feel like Donovan kind of doesn't care. Well, that's still, yeah. okay, fair. <laughs> you know? Well, because then Donovan says to Hoovy, he's like, it's not personal. It's business. And I wrote in my notes, it, it is in not in fact business. Nope. It is uh, it's entirely it's a personal. sport. <laughs> <laughs> and to Donovan's credit, he's like, hey, man, if you get a head injury, won't you die? Yeah. And Hoovy's like, yeah. Well, and Hoovy's like, that's not the point. The point is to have faith. And it's like, no, no, it's that like dying. <laughs> no, the point is the dying thing. That's very much the point. And then he like steps to him and he's like, take your best shot. And Donovan's like, bro, I'm not going to prison for murder. Right. Like, I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> you understand that if I did that, you would die, right? If I did that and I hit you in the back of the head, you would die? Yeah. That's what you know about yourself. Or if I knock you down. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Punch me in any part of my body except the back of my head. <laughs> right now. I'll show you. So, yeah, so the whole team leaves and just Hoovy and Donovan are hanging back, sitting on the steps. Time for a quick heart to heart. Hey, uh, I'm sorry we just had an act three confrontation. No, no, I'm sorry we had an act three confrontation. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, but then Donovan explains and once again, you know, that the capitalism's absurd failure is just glaring right at them and they can't see it. He's like, yeah, you know, like I was born in in inner city Atlanta and I and I have had some problems there, got mixed up with some some bad shit. Now my entire life depends on my high school basketball prospects. It's the only chance I'll have to get to college and and to and to better myself at all. And we're like, wow, yeah, that's pretty fucked up, isn't it? Yeah, and Hoovy completely doesn't have any empathy here. No. And he's like, but my brain. Yeah. My brain, and this is just like a fun thing I want to do. And the kid's like, no, but my career, you don't understand. <laughs> so like, I am doomed to a life of poverty unless I am successful right now in this moment. And Toomey's like, yeah, but Priv, Priv, I just called him Toomey. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's catching on. <laughs> well, it's not that different from cancel Kara. Hoovy. Everyone cancel her. No, it's not. Oh God! Uh, Hoovy. You gotta, you Come gotta, on, gotta, woke mob, help us this, out here. This is your Margaret Atwood Hill. You die on. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not allowed to say to me anymore. <laughs> but Hoovy literally is like, but privilege. 
Right. I yep. want to protect my privilege. And Donovan's like, I hate you. Well, Donovan is like, hey, look, man, like I have a legitimate shot at like, you know, going to a good school and getting a good education. And, and, and Hoobie's like, yeah, but I also had dream of being in the NBA. And it's like, yeah, man, but you're like a, a short little white kid with a brain tumor. <laughs> like let's come on. You're let's, five foot nine <laughs> and your grades are really good and your parents are like really supportive and loving and you'll be fine. Right. You also have dreams of tongue kissing Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah. it's just, tongue kissing Angelina Jolie isn't your one way out. Movie. Do you? Okay. Did you also notice that during this whole scene on the steps, this like heart to heart, like bro to bro scene? Hoovy is like, yo, bro. Yeah. Let's get stop. real yep. talk. Mm -hmm. it's, he goes in and gets a chair just so he can sit in it backwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> he might as well put sunglasses on and be like, can we wrap for a second, Donovan? <laughs> I'd love to wrap. Should I turn my hat sideways for this? Uh, would that be more impactful? Yeah. So, okay. So anyway, so dad's out fighting fires when mom calls with some bad news. She says, I need you to come home. The tumor is back. I so wanted to pan over. The tumor's just sitting on the couch, right? <laughs> uh, or even better, it pans over and the mom has her arm out. She's the tumor and she's stabbed the other mom. Like <laughs> <laughs> Terminator 2. We, that movie, by the way, would be called Tuminator 2. <laughs> Eli, the inside of your it's mind not must be the wildest place. Just Yeah. Just wow, bananas. nothing for the it's not a tumor joke. Okay, fine. I, I, I'm not, hey, I was, I was I'm enjoying. Not, I'm, just, I'm not even going to try with you for you people it's anymore. Fair, it's fair. <laughs> so, yeah, and by the way, this, ha this has nothing to do with anything whatsoever, right? They, they, they just they go back to the <laughs> doctor. just say that 50 times, and yeah. that's the whole movie. This yeah, well, that's has nothing true. to okay. do with anything. Fair, fair, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, no, withdrawn. <laughs> but they go back to the doctor, and the doctor's like, yeah, I think you might have some bonus tumor. You might not. We will never revisit this. And then the mom is like, so, okay, so what about him playing basketball? And the doc's like, oh, no, that would be insane and stupid. And they don't, and, don't do that. Right. And then they're like, okay, but then what the hell would the movie even be about then? Yeah. At this point, I wrote in my notes, what's a mother to do? Let her kid play basketball and die or do literally anything else and not die? Yeah, yeah. And I wrote, dad is more concerned about this kid's 0% chance of making it as a basketball star than his anything percent chance of literal death from head injury. Yeah. And he's legit fighting with mom about it. And meanwhile, neurosurgeon is just rubbing his hand over the kid's head going, mm, poor prognosis. Yeah. Poor prognosis. <laughs> It's like, because magic. I don't know. He's not screaming and dying from the touching. Mm -hmm. so. It's better than so I thought. Weird. And then their fucking parade of misfortune ups the ante one more time. They, we get the mom coming out and the dad's like, yep, both of the horses miscarried at the same time. Just like yeah. some biblical plague has been falling yeah. upon our house or something. And now we don't even have baby horses to sell. Do we know what the dad's name is in this movie? Like, is his name actually Job? Because that would just be too much. It's Jeff. But yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and worse still, someone from Texas came and arrested the horse for losing the foals. So now it's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> mm. We didn't put it in a tiny little horse coffin. So we're going to be in some trouble. Right. And they have this moment, and this happens in all these movies where it's like, what could I have done? Could I have done anything better? And I just wrote in my notes, oh, oh, I know what you could have done. <laughs> you could have not voted for politicians who upheld a system that would allow this to happen to you under the assumption that it would never happen to you. That's what you could have done. There you go. I know. Call on me. Pick them. But they never call on me. See, now, if I wrote, if those two stillborn foals come back to life, now that's a movie-worthy <laughs> miracle. <laughs> and the fuck three guys pushing you out of the fucking snow. I want... And Anyway, yeah, I have higher hopes. And they sell their last horse and Hoovy's having this moment with the last horse. He's like, sorry, we have to sell you to the glue factory. You see, <laughs> the free market solution to stuff, actually, it's that's really just about the market. The market is about money and creating more money. For, hey, it's, it's fine. It's fine. You're going to die really quickly. Well, not super quickly, but you'll die <laughs> in the vast expanse of the universe. You'll die. Yeah. <laughs> what do we want? Teaching critical race theory in school? <laughs> Come on. So, yeah, the number of boy, are they down on their lucks that we get in a row is just staggering. So they're selling their horses and their house and the fridge is pretty much empty. And and at this point, Hoovy needs to put his foot down, right? And Basically, Hoovy, again, 
13 year old kid at this time that this is based on. Basically, Hoovy says, hey, look, I can also get hit by a bus, but that's no reason for me to never leave the house. I might as well die for the sake of high school sports, right? Only 1% of the people who get COVID die of it, Mark. Trust me. <laughs> it's fun. Make sure you share a bunch of memes about how rare it is to die. I'm to the Herman Cain Award has actually written in and asked me. <laughs> oh, God. So- yeah, so but he explains that maybe God gave him a tumor so that his family could overcome their fear of him dying of a tumor. Yeah, yeah, just like Joe. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's a weird exposure therapy, but okay. <laughs> but apparently that's enough for mom because this is where she agrees that, yes, he can play basketball again. Yeah. Which I didn't realize she was the limiting factor in this, but all right. Nor did sure. I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we do this completely pointless time cut to three months later. This is the dumbest time cut I think we've ever encountered in a movie, right? Because they're not in like the playoffs. Nope. I know. Why couldn't this just be the next day? Right. Why couldn't it? It's just a random game. It's just some game. (laughs) Yep. But for whatever reason, we cut it's because like dad was sitting there when they were trying to make the movie. He goes, but that didn't happen the next day. It happened three months later. Apparently. I feel like. You know how sometimes like your your community sets aside like a weird day for someone, but it's always like a Thursday in March. It's never during the finals. Yeah. <laughs> this was they were like, okay, we've agreed that the community can come together and chant Hoovy 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 at the basketball game, but it's got to be a Tuesday in September. We cannot do this <laughs> during March Madness. So, yeah, but he's going to play basketball again. The music is so hilariously over the top that we we get the pregame pep talk from Coach Wilson. Oh, and it's so religious. Yeah. It's so overtly religious. But my fear, because I'm watching this and I'm like, that's ridiculous. It's not really like this. And then I'm like, oh, maybe it is. Oh, it's it's super like this. Well, I, I think he went to a religious school or this is illegal as all hell, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, but I think that still happens in yes. towns like normal. And like, I'm so concerned or confused. Like, are there no kids on the team that aren't Christian? I, they they no. don't care. They, <laughs> they, they don't, don't care. And the kids are basically just keep your head down. I don't want to get my ass kicked. Yeah, yeah well, I don't want to get kicked off the team. That's true. And the funniest part is the coach is like, Who's in this together? We are. We. 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 And then they get too fast, so they're chanting wee wee, and you can see all of the actors realize at the same time they're chanting wee wee, so it just sort of dissolves into a prayer to Jesus. (laughs) Jesus, please forgive us for just chanting wee wee. We didn't know what we were doing. Ended up chanting for dicks. I love to, like, this This movie will be damned if we are going to skip over the national anthem. Thank you very much. So we sit through it. Oh yeah, if you thought my religion was annoying, wait until you see my <laughs> patriotism. Mm. Hey, we've gotten half of the Christian nationalism out so far, but uh, yeah. Also, like, this basketball game in the small town would not have a play-by-play or the local news there. Well, so the, the local news would be there for the feel-good story of Hoovy, which is, I think, what... Oh, for Hoovy. Yeah, what yeah. we're going for. Like, they're Hoobie. not there to, like, you know, broadcast the game or anything. They just want a couple of shots. For- but why is there a play-by-play? Like, this is on ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> and also, <laughs> why do we watch so many plays? So much. This is so uninteresting. Like, yeah, okay, we get it. He can still play basketball, but we haven't set anything up to the point where other players can have character arcs at this point. Nope. It's just basketball, a sport I don't like. And mom at the end of like the first half or quarter, I don't really care. She's like, that was the longest 30 minutes of my life. And I'm like, it was the longest hour and a half, hour and a half. I've been (laughs) fucking watching this for an hour and a half. (laughs) When she said that was the longest 30 minutes of my life, I wrote in my notes, not the Eli Bosnick. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, and they're doing like their team, the uh, Hoobies team is the Spartans. And the Spartans are apparently doing way better against this undefeated team than the fucking Vegas odds makers expect. <laughs> mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Yeah, because everyone cares. No one doesn't care. There's also this great moment. This is so small. I, I, it's, it's hardly worth going after, but I love this so much because it really indicates how bad the filmmaking here is. There's a kid named Scooter on the team. And the play-by-play announcer is going, wow, Scooter sucks, right? 
<laughs> and then Hoovy needs to coach Scooter up a bit, and so he gets better, right? So that we see that Hoovy's helping his team get better. And here's how that plays out. The coach him up scene is Hoovy going, I believe in you, Scooter. And then Scooter blocks a guy, and then Hoovy comes up to him and says, I knew you could do it, Scooter, and that's the half. <laughs> Resolution. Yep. Re Resolution. So this is based on a real story. So do you think these kids were at any point in their lives aware of the fact that like being named Scooter and Hoovy was not like going to give them a leg up in this world? <laughs> no. Or maybe it does give them I like it's just they are ludicrous. Like we are ludicrous people walking around. Yeah. yeah. I have a buddy from high school who still goes by Riblet as a fully grown adult. Riblet? Riblet's Riblet. pretty damn cool though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I can wow. see that. That's better than Hoovy. He got his rib taken out for like a heart thing. Oh. Oh, that's kind of so cool. We called him Riblet. All right. Yeah, like you would think that Hoovy would have upgraded his nickname to something having to do with the orange sized tumor in his brain or maybe he would just go with a more a grown up version like Hoover right yeah. Hooves. I mean look I think we can all agree that Hoovy is better than like let's say if your nickname in high school was Chunk and then that turned into I don't know Chunk the Monk like you would never go by Chunk the Monk no, that would be a as terrible... an adult we can all agree that that yeah, would that be that like would be... a crazy thing yeah yeah so yeah. super super deep cut uh, okay. <laughs> they'll know who yeah they'll no know that's who. true even if they don't know the story they'll know who you're talking about okay <laughs> so all right so it's halftime we're in the locker room Eve, coach oh, is giving uh the pep talk <laughs> and he's like hoovy i want you to finish the pep talk and do the whole like put the hands in thing and hoovy says no i want donovan to finish the pep talk and do the whole hands in thing because then he'll have a character arc Yep. And they're like, are you sure he yeah, would have because a- I'm the white savior of the, yes, of, the right. of the troubled youths. Yep. So Donovan gives us this speech about how he's learned something very important here today. He finally understands what a team really is, what a family really is. And then they go out for more basketballing. Yeah. yeah. And so here's going to be the conflict of the last, I don't know, four minutes of this basketball game. Number 12 on the other team is like, he's throwing a lot of elbows. <laughs> and what doesn't happen is no one goes, hey, I'm sorry, number 12. I know you're really enjoying the basketball and you really want to win. That kid, that one right there with the glasses, if he falls down, he'll head his head and die. So you can fucking just Tony Jaw run your elbow into anyone on the team except that kid. But they don't do that. No, no They're just I mean, like, oh, he's not very sporty. Yeah, these are real stakes, Eli. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. All of this matters somewhere. I just wanted to see where someone tells number 12 and he's just like, okay, I would have loved a heads up about this. Like, I'm an overcompetitive teenage boy. Uh, someone right. could tell me life and death was on the line here. Yeah, I didn't want to actually kill him. I wasn't trying to kill him. I was just trying to win the game. I just want to win basketball. Why is he playing? <laughs> Well, and we should point out that this overly aggressive kid that knocks down to me and almost kills him is the other black kid in the film. You're right. Yep, it is Important the other black point. kid in yeah, the film. Yeah, with obviously an attitude problem. Yes. But you just made a very good point. He falls down, I think, twice in this twice. game and hits his head. Yep. In slow motion. And both times the entire crowd goes, uh, 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 did he die? No, I okay, didn't all right, die. Okay, die. All right. Keep it, put it back in then. Put him back in. <laughs> and also, I love this part. His neurologist or neurosurgeon, actually, for some reason, is in the stands. Oh, yeah. He wasn't going to miss <laughs> sitting this. Sitting next to his family watching. And when Hoovy falls down and hits his head, he does not run to check on nope. the child. The parents run down and they go, are you okay? Neurologist is like, I don't know, off eating a hot dog or something. Hey, I had the scene where I told you not to let your kid play fucking basketball. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to rush down there to do some free doctoring. <laughs> yeah, so then, oh no, the thing I said would happen, happened. So then Hoovy is unconscious for a couple of seconds wakes up and he's like, it's cool, it's cool. And he stands up on his own and everybody's like, he's fine, he can play. And I'm like, that's not how brain damage works. Yep. <laughs> I wanted so badly for him to turn around to jog back out of the court and he's just got like shit running down his leg. And they're like, um, Hoovy, you might want to sit this quarter out, but no, really, I'm fine. Lemon, 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 <laughs> carrot top, boop. <laughs> 
It's so bad. Like, this kid is probably really seriously injured. He needs to see a neurologist. But his surgeon's just sitting there in the bleachers with a thumbs up. Going like, I am midway through this hot dog. I don't, it's not like I have a plate to put it on. I bought nachos. The cheese does not stay warm. I'm not coming back here <laughs> no, to l- cold nacho cheese. Fuck you. I told you guys in my office. Yeah, he's literally like, you've got this air, bud. This is great. <laughs> There's no rule in the rule book that says tumors can't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So the coach is like, all right, this was a terrible idea to put you in. You just fell down and all, everyone in the stands was like, oh, fuck, coach just killed that kid. So I'm going to put you down on the bench for at least the last minute of the game. Right. Mm-hmm. And Hoobie's like, no, coach, I can keep playing. And so he's like, all right, well, in that case. <laughs> To be fair, if the last minute of this movie had just been Goofy sitting on the bench, like having a Gatorade, like <laughs> in slow motion. Did you see? I fell down. I fell down, but I was fine, though. But like in real life, though. it would have been Hoofy like wobbly on the bench, like barfing or something. Because <laughs> right. He yes. fucking had a really severe head injury. Oh, I forgot the numbers four to seven. Shit. <laughs> yeah. ah, I feel like I'm going to need those. It's all right. It's all right. There's only three pointers. There's no four point shot. <laughs> Actually, there is a four-point shot in basketball. I, so, Half court. Yeah. Well, well no, no. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what we end with, right? They're they're down three. He makes the three-pointer just as time expires. But number twelve, that uppity black kid, knocks him over and fouls him on that shot. Right. Yeah. And once again, he falls and hits his head. I like. I'm like. You know, if he just fucking black swanned his way out of this fucking movie, at least it would have a good moral at this point. Just, I wanted one guy in the bleachers to be like, I would love for us to take Hoovy out of the game now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the stakes are weird. The stakes are weird on this Tuesday. <laughs> but yeah, so they've got a foul shot and the ref comes over and is like, hey man, I know you got the brain damaged kid that just fell on his head twice in the last minute. Up for the foul. You can you can have somebody sub in for him if you'd like. And Hoovy's like, no, I can make it, coach. And he checks his back of his leg for shit. And he's like, no, it looks like he's gonna be good. <laughs> he just grabs his teammate's head and tries to bounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have danced all night. Okay, actually, you know what? We would actually like the other kid. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, he's got his balls. He's dribbling his balls. <laughs> so- He's doing a bridge and walking around the room. I'm so sorry, everybody. (laughs) But but Hoovy takes the shot. He makes it. He wins the game. Everybody's happy now. Yeah, Yeah. totally didn't see that coming. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's nice to have a nice unpredictable ending there. Mm -hmm. So then we back out. Of course, we've got to make 90 fucking minutes here. So we back (laughs) out to mom's bullshit motivational speech, right? She's wrapping that up. Oh, yeah. She's like, you know, sometimes you just got to get in the wheelbarrow. And I'm like, no. Yeah, she's still talking about the wheelbarrow. And at this point. No, you don't. In in neither neither in this story that you're telling me now or in the analogy that that's a story about, nobody got in the wheelbarrow. No. The guy still made it across the tightrope. There would have been no reason to have another human there. <laughs> you put your son in the wheelbarrow. If, if we're <laughs> carrying the method. Well, and, and even in this movie, when somebody got in the wheelbarrow, he fell down and almost died. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, he made it about one and a half seconds of walking yes. in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> but, but mom's takeaway from all of that is sometimes you got to get in the wheelbarrow because believing makes something possible. And I'm like, that's not how possible works. <laughs> yeah, she literally said, faith makes it real. And I'm like, yeah, the brain damage. That is well, yeah. makes the brain damage <laughs> much more tangible. It's true. Oh, for fuck's sake. And then... The best part of the whole movie. I'm yes. so excited. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So we're going to get a... We have, like, real footage of the real Hoovy playing in that meaningless high school football game where he almost died several times. And then the movie gives us the breakfast club clothes. Mm-hmm. Sure does. So it goes, it starts off by saying, Hoovy went on to live his dream of playing college basketball. Don't ask where, don't be a dick. There's no, it doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> at college is where. His sister, who's very important to the movie, is a mother. Oh my God. Yeah, right. Who it literally it, they said say that. like Hoobie went on thing. to be a dad and Jen went on to be a mom. I'm like, what a fucking failure do you have to be before they have nothing else in your breakfast club? Cl-? Okay, you know what? I, he went on to be a podcaster isn't better. So, okay, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. But then 
just to make this thing fucking requiem for a dream levels of depressing. Yes. It comes on and says that mom and dad, they did lose their farm, but then they went on to sell Amway. So it's just yep. <laughs> vitamins. They there's they did well with a company. supplement company. An MLM! Yes, there's Just. literally nothing more Christian than a multi-level market. They, got, they yep. got rich with an MLM! Yeah, and you know they went to everyone in town. They were like, you know that our su- yes, there's right. nothing that helped him more <laughs> when his eyeballs were facing two different directions <laughs> than these Thrive Shakes. Didn't you love them, hun? <laughs> yep. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Right. They literally made the claim that Ruth is now one of the world's most sought out speakers. They said that. Yes. They said that about the mom. No, she's not. <laughs> no. No. Just her and Malala sitting backstage at the TED Talks. <laughs> what did you do, kid? Do you have to sell your farm? Barack Obama's just like, oh, it wasn't really that big a deal what I did. What <laughs> you you uh you sell Thrive? Is that <laughs> that's nice? <laughs> It's like she's selling the whole story to Obama backstage, and he's like, "Why didn't Why didn't he just not play basketball?" I'm still really confused about. It seems really dangerous. You know, I wanted to go on and play uh, NBA ball too. I was way better than him, and I just recognized at a certain point that you know that takes an enormous amount of. You know, never mind. It's fine. All right, so I guess I I feel like the closing question is pretty obvious. Now that we've gotten all the way through and we're outside of that movie, in your expert opinion, is the moral of this story? malignant or benign <laughs> so get this you guys i did some some googling oh really i don't usually do the googling oh. but i did some googling guess where i think most of this family's money came from where's that where so i feel like i know and i'm so excited i think you do so a federal judge awarded the family like a let me see half a million dollars in a settlement because on May 21st, 2012, this family took a producer to court. The producer was named Christopher Eberts. He ha- he made Lucky Number Slevin and Lord of War. Okay. Great movies. He defrauded the father in this family of $615,000 because he promised him that he would make a movie about his son, but he needed the dad to invest in it. Really? Yes. So the dad gives this producer over the course of, I don't know, several months, all of this seed money. The family ends up going bankrupt and everything's crazy again. (laughs) And then the guy just like cuts and runs and he's like, we're not making this movie. Yes. And in the one article you can find about this, their lawyer is quoted at the end being like, I don't know how much of the money we're going to recover. He declared bankruptcy. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I love this. At the very end of this article that I read, it said the movie Hoovy was later produced by Echo Light Studios with no budget for advertising and distribution. And that was the last sentence. Oh, it's even yep. worse than that. The, the movie was distributed through like Christian schools and churches. <gasps> so, like, yeah, there, mm. there, there was never even a theatrical release for it. Yeah. Woof. Wow. Whoa. Just Hoovy bringing his phone, playing the movie into an empty theater. In theaters now. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you need to leave. We're trying to play the adventure. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm going, I'm going. Okay. I also, Don't hit me in the back of the head. I'll die. I also <laughs> wanted to know what was up with Hoovy. Like, is he around? And no lie, he's on Twitter, you guys. He's he sure an is. insurance salesman. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's on an Twitter. Salesman. And his um, he has like 65 followers or something like that. It's really sad. And he's at Hoovy Inspires. I oh, can't. God. <laughs> to be fair, he does inspire me. Only the 65 people, but he inspires me. <laughs> oh, 57. He has 57. 50, oh, followers. wow. He's lost a few. Don't, hey, <laughs> hey, podcast listener, don't tweet mean shit at Hoovy. Okay, he's not playing. He's not playing the game. Don't tweet me and shit at some insurance salesman in Idaho. Well, and to be to be fair, he he, he tweeted about five times all in 2015. I think right when the movie came out. Okay, yeah. I think you're probably yeah. good tweeting mean shit at. I'm just still <laughs> don't. Like, don't. But, yeah, but oh. yikes, yikes! Give us vulgarity guys. for charity money, and I will tweet it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's better. I'll I like do that it better. for you. Just conduit that. Oh, <laughs> all right. 
Well, Kara, thanks again for hanging out with us. And uh, listeners, if you'd like to hear more from Kara, look for the Talk Nerdy podcast wherever you found this one or check the show notes for more info. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Hoovy. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to sneak back into your feed next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be watching the Christian MMA sports tacular that is the favorite. What? Okay. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 326 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for bringing the funny again, and a perhaps even a huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. And a quick reminder to get those donations into modestneeds.org before Thanksgiving Day. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows and scan the ADS citation data, D&D Minus, and the Skeptic Rate available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Google on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Ray and Eli Bosley, I'm no illusion. Promise and work hard or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. I mean, how are we supposed to stop their own there? Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, there's like literally nothing I can add to this. You went on to not be able to afford to not take advantage of the deals that the Elliott family is <laughs> offering. <laughs> Kara's new stand-up special, Triggered, begins with a 25-minute set on why she should be allowed to call people to me. <laughs> I know! <laughs> Hashtag cancel Why slip Andrew, of yeah. the tongue? It sounds just like hooby, damn it. <laughs> You like my Patrick Warburton? You're nailing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was alone what? in my house for two days. What? Just, <laughs> doing that. Pretty depressing. Okay. Oh, the Doctors and Christian movies. I love Doctors and Christian movies. They are constantly like, well, I'll tell you one thing. He'll never recover unless God reaches down from heaven and does it. We're really yeah, just uh, jerking this, got this shit off over here. There's really no purpose at all in what we're doing. I stole this coat. I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I know? Hmm. That Manly Bands doesn't sell dinosaur bone rings. Sure don't. <laughs> sure don't. Maybe they maybe cladistically they're just made of birds. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's no problem. Just Chicken bone ring. Sore pigeon. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.